Hi everyone, Christina here. I'm back with another video featuring supplies from Concord and Knight's Brighter Days release. Today's card, whew, it took a long time to create, but it's so fun, it's worth it. Um, it has this really fun like um, Polaroid camera image, and then it has, you can have it just be the camera, or you can do the Polaroid piece or the picture piece that comes out of the camera, and I decided to put a photo on it. So it's going to be really, really fun. Um, it's, it's a picture of me with five of my best friends. So I might have to make four more cards to send each one of each one of them one of these cards. So let's jump. The stamp set I'm using is called Oh Snap from Concord and Ninth, and it has a coordinating die set. And I'm starting out with some watercolor paper. This is Arches Cold Press watercolor paper, and I've cut it to five and a half by seven and a half. My original thought was to make this a five by seven card, so I wanted that watercolor paper to go beyond the size of the card so that as I watercolor on top, I could have the paint go all the way to the edge. Using some concentrated watercolors from Dr. P.H. Martins today, um, I'll have the exact colors I used listed down below in the supplies. But generally, I just used a kind of a magenta shade. I used yellow. Um, I don't think I used green. I used a blue shade and then a purple shade. And the purple shade is actually blue violet, so it's actually more blue than purple, but it worked out great. The thing that really made this watercolor background was making sure the paper was completely wet and saturated before I started painting. And I let it sit on the paper and soak in for, I don't know, maybe a couple minutes. And then I came in with my paint. Now these colors, these paints are so concentrated, they're so bright and vibrant that as I add them onto this paper and it starts to wick away, all of that brightness from the paint doesn't get lost, which I love about these paints. That's what I love about them. Now, these in particular, the radiant, radiant concentrated watercolors are not light fast, meaning that if this card is displayed on a mantle, the colors will fade over time. So just keep that in mind. It's just a little bit of a trade-off. Um, there are actually a lot of crafting products out there that are not light fast. And for card makers, it's not as essential as it would be for maybe like a scrapbooker who is trying to find something that's very archival and they don't want the colors to fade over time. But for card makers, it's not so bad. So um, if you do something like this and you want to make sure that it is archival, but you don't want to lose the color vibrancy, I would suggest painting it and then scanning it with your computer and printing it in archi archival photo ink. That's probably the best way to get around it. But for just general card making, I think that's a little bit overdoing it. So just painting like this and then passing on the card is probably enough. Now, after I painted on all four colors and kind of got them to spread, I lifted up my watercolor on the board. And if you can see that blue was really wanted to move. Um, the paints were still, had a lot of movement going around. And once I got it to the point where I wanted it, um, I used my heat tool to sort of lock those colors in place. And that's the way to kind of get the colors to stop moving. I didn't want them to extend out even past this point. So I grabbed my heat tool. Still cleaning up here. <laughs> but I grabbed my heat tool and I started to dry this because I wanted to make sure that the colors didn't extend too far out of that area, that center stripe. My plan is to have the camera right over the top and I don't want the colors to go all the way to the edge of the card. So I removed my watercolor paper from the board and um, I'm, I actually did this twice. The first time I accidentally splattered on some blue paint and I also changed the color red, but essentially the same thing. So if you need to do this a couple times, don't be afraid. I then stamped the camera image on another piece of that same watercolor paper in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This is a pigment ink. It's waterproof. It's very, very stark and black. It's perfect for an application like this. And because the watercolor paper is quite textured, I did have to stamp this multiple times. I think I stamped it three times in total until I got a really, really dark black line. Speaking of black, I'm going to be using a black uh, radiant concentrated color. This could have been any black from any watercolor set, but since I was using these, 
I diluted the black down quite a bit so I could have different shades of gray, and then I started to paint the camera. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to have that super colorful background and then this black and white camera on the front is that as the, the picture is pulled out of the camera, you'll see in the finish card, as the, fit, the picture is pulled out of the camera, the picture is in color as well. So I wanted like the camera to sort of take uh, second place and let the photo and the background, the really colorful parts of the card, be the focal point and be the main part of the card. So I painted on everything and I actually had to refer to some uh, kind of Instax camera or Polaroid camera clip art online to figure out exactly how to paint this. But I think I got it pretty good for how it's supposed to look. I then took the coordinating dies and I die cut the camera and the camera also, like the die set, also has this little tiny slot that you can cut out for the bottom of the camera so that the picture can come out of it. So I grabbed that little die and I used a little bit of washi tape just to hold it in place and then ran that through my die cutting machine. And this is going to cut out the perfect opening for the size of the picture to come out of the camera. So after I removed the die, I have this little tiny opening where that photo can come out of the camera. So then I stamped the photo area and there's a little tiny itty bitty text greeting or stamp that's in the, in the stamp set that says pull here. So I added that to the bottom of the picture and then I used this die from the die set and it has this like kind of bar at the top and that area is so that when you pull the photo out of the camera, it doesn't come all the way out. So you wanna make sure you have that at the top of the photo. I then took a ruler and a craft knife and just cut out the center area of this photo. I did that so I could place it over the top of this photo of me and five of my friends. So I'm, it's going to be placed just right over the top and I just used my photo printer at home to print out this photo. I then grabbed my Xyron creative station light and I ran it through and this puts adhesive on the entire surface area on the back of that photo frame. Use my fingers to burnish that and press that in to make sure the adhesive isn't all over the areas and where I don't want it. And then I removed that top sheet and I'm left with just the stickiness on the back of the frame. Then put that directly over the top of my photo and then I used my scissors to cut this out right to that edge of the photo. Now there's a lot of adhesive on the back of the photo frame. And so after I cut it out, there was still some stickiness right on the edges. And that's going to really prevent the photo from coming out of the camera smoothly. So I grabbed an adhesive eraser from Xyron and just ran it along the edge of this photo here. And that got rid of any of the adhesive that was making the edges sticky. Then I stuck it inside my die cut camera just to test it out, make sure everything was working well. And you can see how cool that is and how that kind of bar stops the photo from coming out. So now I'm gonna be working on how I adhere the camera to the front of the card. The first thing I wanted to make sure it had was somewhere that would stop the photo from going all the way underneath the camera. So I put it in the exact position where I wanted it and then I put a little strip of adhesive right there at the top and that's going to act as a stopper so that the photo doesn't go all the way in and underneath the camera and then the person can't get it back out. I then grabbed some pieces for the sides as well. Actually, first I'm going to put adhesive on the top so that it's nice and flat when I put it on the card. And then I grabbed adhesive for the sides. And I don't want to put it right up next to the photo because there is that tab that has to travel downward. So I just put adhesive um, a little bit away from the photo and um, just running along the side. This is going to make it so that it sits nicely on the card and gives it a little bit of a track for the photo to come out. Put adhesive on the very bottom so that the camera lays flat on the front of the card. Cut off that excess. And then I'm going to sort of test this out before I place it on the card just to make sure that it's gonna work okay. You can see how that sort of creates a track for the photo to come down the, down the center. I removed the release paper on the back of the adhesive 
and then I placed it um, directly onto the front of my watercolor panel. As far as the greeting goes, I wanted to use the O oh Snap greeting from the stamp set, but I didn't want to stamp it directly on the camera or on the watercolor background. So I decided to stamp it on a separate piece of watercolor paper and I actually stamped this twice to get it nice and dark. And then I drew a little bit of a sassy talking bubble around it. Um, I thought it would just kind of go with the kind of more playful nature of the card. And I just drew that around the pencil then I cut it out with my scissors and to make it look a little bit more intentional to go along with like the sketchy lines of the camera image, I added a line around the outer edge and then put some foam adhesive on the back and then just found the perfect spot. At this point, I decided I don't want this card to be five by seven anymore. I want it to be a regular A2 size card. And I also wanted to center up that colorful stripe down the middle. So I decided to just make it a little bit smaller. My card base is made out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And I just scored that at five and a half to create a top folding card. I put the entire panel on some foam adhesive and then press that down onto the card front. So you can see how fun this card is with the photo that pulls out and then goes back in. I think it turned out phenomenally and I'm so glad I took the time to make this card. Don't you love how that turned out? I think it's so fun and creative. And I really enjoyed how the watercolor wicked out. I kind of experimented with how much paint I needed. I think it's just, oh, I can't wait to make more of this same card. So I'm gonna ask you guys another question to answer in the comments. And it's something that's really relevant for what's going on right now in the world. I wanna know, what is your foolproof way to get back to sleep when you wake up? So if you're not sleeping at night, what do you do? What puts you back to sleep? What's your favorite tip? I'm going to give you guys a, real, a really good tip right now. I know they say don't look at your phone or whatever when you're trying to sleep, but um, there are some really relaxing spa type music things that are out there. And there's a particular app that I love. It's called Portal. Um, I know it's for iPhones. I don't know if it has. it's for other devices, but They've taken like high definition sound and video of different places throughout the world. And there's like waterfalls and forests, things like that. And there's one in particular that's an aquarium and it's this weird like humming sound that puts me to sleep like no other. So highly recommend the portal app. If I remember, I'll put a link down below so you can check it out. I think it's like $2.99 or something, but highly worth the cost. It's so, so neat. So on screen, I've got two more videos for you to check out. I hope you'll check those out. Um, also, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do card videos pretty regularly for more inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in another video very soon.